antenna field zones so we have studied about the antennas the basic parameters of an antenna like radiation pattern beam area beam efficiency beam width the directivity the uh, gain of an antenna the effective apertures of an antenna all those are the basic parameters which has been explained and the antenna field zones so any antenna fields or is the field of an antenna means first of all let us understand what is a, the field of an antenna if i take an example of an antenna let me take the antenna <coughs> of an on antenna or as any dipole antenna for an example so for any antenna there will be an input power which is given for the antenna to work or is to transmit the signal and this signal will propagate in the waveguide structure and which generates the rf field so whenever the rf field is generated or as the uh, power is radiated from the antenna there is a field which is created in the surrounding of the antenna and there will be one more field which is also available away from the antenna means one is the inter dimension and one is the external dimensional so the field or is the magnetic field or is electric field lines of force which is present surrounding the antenna is what we call it as field of an antenna and there are two types of fields one is the fraunhofer field and the other one is the fresnel field or is the other name is one is the near field and the other one is the far field so if i take an example of short dipole antenna when an uh, input is given from a microwave generator then the electrical lines of force which is available in the surrounding of this antenna is designated as near field means within the aperture of the antenna and the waves which are is present away from the field or is away from the antenna at a farther distance that is called as far field so the field of an antenna is the radiations that is present surrounding an antenna and there exist two fields one is the near field and the other one is the far field the near field can be called as fresnel field and the far field can be called as fraunhofer field there's a diagrammatic representation of the antenna field zones it is called as zone because it is in particular region it is classified into near field and far field or as near zone and front of us so that's why it is called as antenna field zones so here in the diagram we have considered a short dipole antenna this is short dipole antenna which is present and depending upon the length of the antenna whichever the antenna it would be either it would be a short dipole antenna wire antenna on antenna parabolic or agouda antenna always the length of the antenna is an important factor so this is the short dipole antenna where this is pole 1 and this is pole 2 and this is the total length of the antenna which is designated as l <coughs> so whenever a input is given from the power supply for the antenna to radiate then the signals propagate into free space and the waves whichever is nearer to the antenna forms a boundary and the waves whichever is in this boundary is what we call it as near field or fresnel region or is fresnel field this is the total dimension of the antenna and the field which exists surrounding that antenna is called as near field or as whichever is 
inside the boundary sphere of the antenna region the those fields are called as near field and out of the boundary and away from the antenna which are the field has been generated that field is called as far field so this is the far field or as the fron of a field so we consider a boundary boundary for the antenna depending upon the length of the antenna and the frequency of the antenna so as a basics we had studied about the frequency concept that is f is equal to c by lambda and always the frequency and lambda for an antenna is very much interdependent because the c value is a constant value with the speed of light that is 3 in 10 to the power 8 meters per second but the frequency and lambda is a very important factor and lambda is also relevant to the length of the antenna in a direct way so that's why the length of the antenna decides the area of the near field and the area of the far field and here whenever a boundary sphere has to be considered we have the particular formula that is used to know the boundary region that is r is equal to 2l square by h where l is the total length of the antenna and h is the height at which the antenna has been placed <coughs> so this is how the boundary sphere can be analyzed so you came to know that the antenna field the field of an antenna is the field which is as the electrical field that is available in the dimension of the antenna and there are two types of fields one is a near field and the other one is a far field the near field is a field which is generated surrounding the boundary level or surrounding the area of an antenna which is also called as fresnel field and available at the nearest distance to the antenna but there is also exists a second field which is called as the far field or as which can also be called as fron of a zone or is fron of a field and this field is the field which is available away from the antenna and it is at the larger distance of the antenna from the antenna so the area where the boundary level has been crossed and the field which is available after the boundary level or as after the boundary spheric sphere area that field is what we call it as far field of an antenna so coming for the comparison between near field and far field of an antenna comparison means say that we need to know what are the advantages and what are the benefits that we get Uh, what are the information that we get from the near and uh, near field, and what are the advantages of far field? And there are few of the parameters which can be analyzed in near field and far field. Uh, that's why a comparison between the near field and far field of an antenna has been explained. So coming for the first one, that is the near field. The near field of an antenna is also called as Fresnel zone. of fresnel region so in a near field always the power flow is not entirely radiated because it is at a shorter distance there will be an echo in the uh, information what have been obtained suppose if there uh, is an metallic object so in a near field in near field the power flow is not entirely radiated because there is some portion uh, of the proportion of the power which gets reflected back and in near field the shape of the field pattern is dependent upon the radial distance radial distance to means to say if i consider a short dipole antenna which is of length l and the radial distance covered by the antenna is 4 pi r square then the shape of the field is always dependent upon the radial distance what is the total dimension the signal can propagate 
So that is what we call it as radial distance. The shape of the field pattern is always dependent upon the radial distance. And next, in a far in near field, there is an energy which is reciprocating between the antenna and the space. So always there will be energy which will be a reciprocating energy between the antenna and the free space. And that energy is what we call it as reactive energy. So a reactive energy exists between the antenna and the free space whenever we consider the parameters of an antenna in near field. Coming for the advantages and few of the parameters of far field, as we know, the far field is also called as Fraunhofer region or as Fraunhofer field. Here in a far field, in the far field, the real power flow is directly radially outward. As shown in the diagram, the far field is radially outward the sphere, or else it is away from the location of the antenna. So the field which is available at the farther distance of the antenna is called as far field or front of a field. And always it is directed radially outward from the radiation pattern or as from the diameter of the antenna. And here in far field, the shape of the field pattern is independent of the distance. Why do we come to this conclusion? That is, why the shape of the field pattern is independent of the distance? Yes. When we consider an antenna which is radiating in the informer, which is radiating the power, in the closed region, the power is limited, the power radiated is limited. But once the signal propagate from near field to the far field, once the signal enters the far away distance, then uh, it is not it is not known how the signals propagate in the open atmosphere or as in free space because if the number of obstacles in the path is less then the power radiated is maximum so that the field pattern obtained is also good suppose if there are obstacles in between when the trans antenna is radiating during that time the power received at the receiver will be less so the effect in the field or as a pattern of the field will vary. It will not be a smooth curve which we obtain in the far field. So that's why always we tell that the shape of the field pattern is independent of the distance. When we plot a radiation pattern or a field pattern, considering the parameters of far field. And the third point is, the outward power flow represents the radiated energy because depending upon whatever the percentage of radiation that has taken place by the antenna, that some percentage of that uh, signal will be received at the receiving antenna. So that's why in far field, the outward power flow represents the radiated energy. Because the, the, uh, the electromagnetic signals or the RF signals are in free space, it is in atmosphere. The capability or is the uh, important performance parameters of receiving antenna is the one which decides how much energy it can capture or as how many waves it can capture. That's why when we are working in far field or a spawn of a region, always the outward power flow represents the radiated energy. How is it and what is the radiation that can take place? So here is an example to understand few concepts about the far field and near field of an antenna. This is the diagram which is taken from one of the publications which shows the diagram of a large array which is implemented in Mexico. And in this array, there are around 
27 antennas which are implemented in a three row railroad tracks that is and has a baseline up to 35 kilometers so there are 27 antennas that is here it would be 9 and on this path it would be 9 antennas and in this path it would be 7 8 9 antennas so all these three combined together will form 17 27 antennas which are implemented in a array so whenever the uh, uh, multiple antennas are implemented side to side by spa equal spacing or equal distance then we call it as an array in further uh, in this chapter you will be studying about the equal spacing array systems and non unequal spacing array systems so this is an array of antenna which is placed unequally where the distance between one antenna to the other antenna in the array of the antennas are slightly varying so here we can see the field which is present surrounding this antenna the field which are is uh, surrounding the antenna this field will be called as near field because each and every antenna ra radiates in the radiates whenever the power is given or whenever the input power is given so this creates a near field by all the antennas but the antenna the way a signal whenever it crosses the boundary this region is called what we call it as far field region so this is an example of the array of antennas which are implemented in the form of an array where 27 antennas are there but all this 27 antennas are not connected in one linear structure but they are divided into three tracks this is track 1 this is track 2 and this is track number 3 so in each track multi uh, around 7 uh, to 8 and eight uh, antennas are implemented so that that forms a linear array and each antenna will have its own field which is generated so this is all about the antenna field zones and we came to know that the field which is surrounding the antenna is called as an uh, field of an antenna and the field of the antenna can be into two types one is the near field and the other one is the far field the near field is also called as fresnel field or fresnel zone because the near field is created when uh, uh, in this surrounding area which is nearby area of the antenna that is the diameter of the antenna which is surrounded by means of the fields but whereas the far field is the field which is obtained at a larger distance because it crosses the boundary level and the far field is also can also be called as front of a zone or as front of a field and always the front of a field or the far field is located after it crosses the boundary of the near field so coming to the comparison between the near field and the far field the uh, in a near field always the power flow is entirely radiated and the shape of the pattern is is always dependent on the radial distance and in a near field there is an energy which is the reciprocating energy in between the antenna and the space which is called as reactive energy but coming for the far field the far field is also called as front of a field and in the front of a field always there is a real power flow which is directed radially outward and the shape of the field pattern is independent of the distance the main reason why we call it is as to be independent is the approximate distance of traveling of the waves in free space cannot be calculated so uh, depending upon that we call that 
the shape of the field pattern is independent of its distance but only important parameter which is required is the maximum effect of the radiated signal on the receiver is important to fetch the parameters at the output and in the far field always the outward power flow represents the radiated energy so this is all about the antenna field zones and the comparison between the fresnel field and the fraunhofer field and coming for the examination point of view this question normally is a short answer question which is as for 6 marks uh that can be explain the antenna field zones or else explain the concept of antenna field zones so for 6 marks out of 6 marks two marks will be allocated for this diagram where you need to derive the diagram of the one of the antenna and should represent the near field and far field of an antenna and the boundary region which specifies the boundary area of the antenna normally it's always better to consider a short dipole antenna to analyze the field pattern because the diagram would be easy rather than comparing the other type of antennas like horn antenna or dish antenna and after that it is also very much important to just briefly differentiate between the near field and far field of an antenna where you can fetch about 5 marks in the examination so first you need to write the diagram then explain briefly about the fresnel field and the fraunhofer field and finally give the comparison between the fresnel field and fraunhofer field in terms of points just make two columns and give the comparison so which may fetch you about 5 to 5 and a half mark finally so this is about antenna field zones uh this is also one of the antenna or uh, this is one of the diagram which shows the satellite antennas which is used for television that is the uh, tv cable channels it is not the array of antenna which are has been included but this is in, uh, implemented in a haphazard fashion there is no equal distance maintained between the antennas or as there is no particular angle at which the antenna has been implemented they just formed a flat surface and that is allowed to propagate and this is one of the diagram of owens valley radio observatory this is one of the antenna system which is implemented for radio observation and here you can see three different antennas are implemented where they are of equal space and we can see that the antenna is implemented above the ground level so this is an open space where the photograph has been captured from a far away distance so this is the base station and on the base station we have the transmitters or as the power cable connections and this is the mast of an antenna and above the mast the parabolic antenna has been implemented and there are the receivers and modulators which is implemented as the receiver terminals so this is about the antenna which is implemented in a valley structure uh, which is implemented in a valley for radio observatory systems and next one more thing that is this is an antenna which is called as adaptive antenna which can adapt a frequency of 2 gigahertz so this is the antenna where it is a array type of antenna in which there are four lines which is fringe and each line has about 12 antennas which is implemented as a linear structure with equal spacing 
and when we implement this set of short dipole antennas which is a, this is a set of 48 antennas which operates at 2 gigahertz each so each row consists of 12 antennas and they are implemented in four rows that is 12 columns into four rows so there are totally 48 small short dipole antenna or as 48 short dipole antennas which is implemented on a single structure and they are called as adaptive antennas because we can make few of the antennas to be workable and few of the antennas to be non active or is inactive so this is a diagram of a set of antenna which has around 48 at uh, the short dipole antennas and which can generate a frequency of 2 gigahertz each antenna can generate is a frequency of 2 gigahertz so this is about the special type of antennas which is used in industry basics